It's May. It's May 2017. So I think it's time I give a commencement speech to all those who are graduating. First, let me applaud you for surviving. And now, let me ask you some questions. <laughs> now what? That's right. Now what? Oh, some of you probably have landed jobs. Some of you are probably going on to another part of the education. Let's say you just graduated high school, you're looking forward to your new frontiers of going to college, and let's say some of you have graduated with a bachelor's and now you're gonna to go to grad school somewhere else or stay in the same school, and right? And go for another two years. And then some of you have gotten your master's and maybe you have plans or were lucky enough to land a position somewhere or have made plans to make sure that uh, there's a continuum of what you are already doing so you can keep in a certain kind of loop to take you where you think you want to go. And then there's those who are, well, now it's time for the doctorate. Maybe some of you are taking a break from school. I know some people who are. Uh, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Did you ever think we're getting educated too much? How's this for a commencement speech? <laughs> what if I said you're getting educated too much? What I mean by this, and I'll have to make some distinctions between a lot of information being thrown at a person's way at such an incredible rate, I don't call that education. I don't call that education. I think there are some people who have the ability to take on a lot of stuff. Or others, as a great mentor of mine said, they're more drop-a-day people. Give them a drop and they'll make the most out of that drop. You know, it's like some people, they take information like, remember going to these smorgasbords where there's just so much food laid out, laid out, laid out, the plates and plates and plates, you know, buffets, this kind of thing. And you go and you go, ah, and you can't wait to shove everything in your mouth. I guess you could feel like you've really eaten from one of those because um, you're very usually a little bit ill. <laughs> Did you actually process the food? Was it nutrient dense food? Is it a nutrient dense education? Or so much thrown your way? you didn't really get a chance to process it. You really didn't get a chance to process it. I'm not talking about remembering every little thing. I'm talking about a quality level of process where your life and the education we're finding each other. This is very important. Our culture has a lot of benchmarks. Got a high school degree, this will get you that much. Got a bachelor's degree, this will get you that much. Got a master's degree, get you that. Get a doctorate, you'll get that pretty soon. Because of certain things, I think people will be having to get doctorates to do almost anything. 
What's wrong with that picture? Does it really measure ability or people just want a doctorate's club? Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, sometimes I was talking to some people recently, this Mason that came over, and I asked him about his education. And he said he started working for this man when he was right out of high school, and maybe even during high school, and who was this Mason, and he was with him for 12 years and was working and learning this trade by this very skilled Mason. And he's been working for quite a while now. And now he has, you know, people who are interested working with him, studying with him, so to speak. Yes, hands-on, in the trade, on the job. And they're not going to college. Same thing with this great plumber we have. I think he had to do something, you know, to get some certificate. But he's terrific. And he has a lot of quality care in what he does. The same things with this mason. I've seen a lot of people. And some people, they have these trades. And some of our electricians, too. They have these trades. They're almost extremely good by the time they're like 18, 19, 20, 21. And they're ready for the workforce in their particular trade. Now, something similar happened to me with the trombone. By the time I graduated high school, I was ready to play. Um, you might have said, well, maybe I was a little green in certain ways, but maybe, you know, looking back, I'd probably say, well, I would do that differently now and this kind of thing. That's a natural thing to happen. That's called growth. No one seemed to be complaining, though. I was always prepared. I could sight read extremely well. Conductor said to do something. I did it. I was enthusiastic. I loved what I did. I got along basically with people really well. And, um, and not trying to be anything other than myself, by the way. I wasn't really politically very savvy. But I was just trying to be decent. Not because it was an effort. <laughs> I'm not saying everyone loved me or I loved everyone. It has nothing to do with that. But there was a certain dependability. So how can we nurture ourselves in our education Hmm. to create enough confidence in what we do. Why was I so ready by 18? It's because of the seriousness that I took it up when I was nine. And I will say one thing in this. I had excellent teachers, but I didn't take lessons every week. We couldn't even afford it. Sometimes I'd go eight months without a lesson. I remember when I was 13, I went eight months without a lesson. But I was learning. There was no YouTube back then. I couldn't get YouTube lessons, okay? Or watch a demonstration of the trombone that way. I was listening to recordings, okay? I was in band and orchestra, and I loved to play my horn. I practiced because I wanted to. And I was always absorbed. And, and I started teaching when I was 12. People come over, band director said, hey, maybe you should take some lessons from this guy. He might do it better than me. Which was really pretty hip of the band director at that time to say that. And I'd take lessons from this, you know, seventh grader. Um, He'll show you some good things. He said lessons with some good people too. 
And so they'd come over to my house and they'd be over all afternoon. I think I charged $2 an hour back then, but, um, or less, but they were over all afternoon. And who knows if we have even took the money. Eventually, yeah, sure, they wanted to, and their parents were thrilled that their kids would come out of there really happy, and they were my age, a lot of them older, a couple younger, and we just had a great time digging into it, watching someone learn because they wanted to. A lot of them didn't take it, but there was a certain confidence I think I I helped them with by encouraging something. And some of them were really naturally talented. So what makes the difference between someone who's talented and someone who wants something? Because you can get all the degrees in the world, all right? Depending on the level of your love, of how you work as a person, why you do what you do, a great mentor of mine said, it's not what you do, it's the reasons why you do it. And my were deep. My were deep for a lot of different reasons, not all musical. Sometimes you have to feel like you have to show something to yourself or your family. But I wasn't under pressure from anyone on the outside of my family to have that happen except myself. And that's for real. They were supportive which was great. But there were other things I had to deal with personally, you know, divorced family and stuff like that, and the different things and all sorts of stuff. Everyone has stuff that we have to deal with. But music became my sanctuary and a couple other things too. But music was a certain expression for all the things that were inside me. I used that trombone as a pipe to express everything that I felt. Humor, anger, love, crushes on girls. <laughs> um, you know, the feeling of flight. And I would develop all these exercises. Like someone playing with something. And the problem with practice, and here's an educational point, the problem with most practicing is people don't play. They don't play and discover. When that child is in a sandbox playing, they're discovering, they're learning, they're educating themselves. And so the question is, are we overeducated by thinking we have to get lessons from everyone and their brother? in order to feel like we know what we're doing. Do we? Or is that just a trend of the times? Now considering, this isn't 1964, but 2017, We need to think about our choices. Try some things, let them sit for a while. Do we actually let anything for a while sit in long enough before we get bored with it? I don't think so. I've seen it for a long time. People get very bored quickly these days. This is a fact. I've been teaching for 50 years. People get bored quicker now. They can't wait to go to the next thing. So every time you do something, you're practicing your behavior, your actions, your reactions. Every time you think something, it sends out a vibration with overtones and everything you do you are educating yourself consciously semi-consciously or unconsciously 
So those of you who are graduating high school and now are looking forward to, wow, I got into the conservatory or a university with a good music program, make the most out of your time. Don't wait to learn from someone who you think can show you how to learn. Learn from everybody. Learn from the different instruments around you. When you're with your instrument, listen to it. Don't get all ticked off that I'm not as good as I want to be. Have standards. I certainly had goals. And yes, I did get ticked off too. Okay, <laughs> I threw a few stands around. Um, I was really f furiously serious about wanting to be so good. Um, and I loved the orchestra. So when you're in school, or if you're not in school, make the most out of your time. I know it's it can be a big party time. Whatever that is, okay. But watch what you're doing. Snap. That time will go just with a blink of an eye. It will. And you want to feel like you were, as my wife says, in. That you were in most of the time with what you were doing. Listening, playing, not just grinding away and, you know, without listening. I think I tape recorded myself a couple of times. Okay? Maybe one time when I was auditioning for principal of the BSO, Someone gave me a, a Revox reel-to-reel -reel recorder, and I'd tape myself and listen. That was very useful. I didn't have a video camera. I didn't have an app, no iPhones then, to watch and see if my intonation was absolutely flawless. And if that's the direction we're going, then play with some of those tools, but don't have them be your total absolute government and build a dependence on them. That would be doing yourself a disservice actually. So start to learn some t ways and means that you can just be with you and your horn without like a million contraptions around you. Are you thinking about the music? People talk about being musical. A lot of people talk about it. But I think the people that really feel it, they know it's related to all sorts of other things in life. And it, it, it can express life, express the life inside yourself, express things around you. When's the last time you looked at a cloud and played it? When's the last time you thought about your tone and thought, maybe this decrescendo should evaporate? Or maybe this day crescendo should look like I'm looking out a window, watching a car get smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes down the street. How are you, 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 educating yourself day to day? Or is it just a dependency on a couple of people? Take your education into your own hands and realize that every second you breathe, something in you is being educated. And you might not get a degree for it, but your development as a person can either grow or wither depending on what kind of knowledge you are putting into your life 
and applying and integrating and living. This comes down to the instrument. This comes down to your music. It comes down to your relationships and it's an ongoing journey. The day it's not a journey for you anymore, the day you'll get a death certificate, But I personally don't believe death is the end of our journey. I think it's another kind of graduation. But I want to make sure that where I am right now, I'm always involved with greater, more useful, actual integrated knowledge, application, expression, giving, receiving, gratitude. And then it won't be waste. And you'll always be ready for, the, for what the next graduation will be. Good luck to all of you.